Hey, what's up YouTube? Alien Rides here, and today we are reviewing this crazy beast of an electric scooter, the Turbo Wheel Phaeton. We're gonna unbox it, tell you about some of the features, and then talk about the crazy performance of it. Subscribe and let's ride. All right, so you can see we've got a huge box. This box is about 150 pounds or so. The FedEx guy was really struggling to bring it up to my doorstep. And you can see this box is just tore up. There are patches torn out of it. Huge chunk here is missing. There's a huge chunk off to the side. I think this thing just got beat up in shipping, but there's a double box, so it seems like it's packed up pretty well. Let's open it up. Damn, that is impressive. Look at those styrofoam blocks. This thing is just packed in here really well. I don't know how I'm gonna get it out because it's super heavy. Let's see, so in the box we have a very simple tool set. We've got a little manual and we've got the charger. So we've got these huge styrofoam blocks here. Oh my God, check out this damper that's in the box. This is a really nice Olin's damper. I was actually looking at getting that for my Jolton Thunder, but it's really cool that it comes with that. That's awesome. And I really don't know how I'm gonna this thing up. It's so big. Oh my God, I'm gonna kill my back in that. Oh my God. Ah. There we go. All right, so the first thing you have to do is install the handlebars, obviously. Just unwrap this. Looks like there's just four hex nuts there, easy enough. So all of these items on the handlebars, the brake levers, the bell, the throttle assembly, it's all loose. And that's intentional because things shift in shipping, so you have to kind of tighten them all up, position them where you want them to be. I usually like the throttle to be about level and the brakes just under that. So we're gonna go ahead and see if we can position this stuff now. All right, so we're gonna install the damper now. And there's a really great instruction sheet that you can read about how to install the damper. And then after that, we'll inflate the tire and we'll check the settings and then we're good to ride. So let's check out some ride footage while we talk about the Turbo Wheel Phaeton. As always, We'll give you an unbiased and unsponsored review of this beast of an electric scooter. Let's get into what the Phaeton is, the performance specs, features, the positives, and the negatives. I'm also going to show you my top speed run later, and we got some really impressive results. So what is the Turbo Wheel line of electric scooters exactly? We've done reviews on scooters from Apollo, Zero, and Turbo Wheel in the past. If you're not familiar with these brands, they all come from the same OEM factory in China called Titan. Each manufacturer is able to customize the scooter and accessories, and eWheels has put together a fantastic package here. Definitely check out a link to the Phaeton in the video description below. The Phaeton is a beast, and built off the same frame as the 011X and TechLife X9. It's a monster scooter built for riding fast and for long distances. This huge scooter with huge performance means something has got to give and that something is portability. We'll talk a little bit more about that in a bit, but for now, let's get into some of the features. The most distinctive feature of the Phaeton is this awesome dual front stem. It looks and feels extremely rugged. I've seen people use these two bars to mount all kinds of accessories to the scooter, extra lights, kitty bars, extra batteries, whatever you can think of. Cables and wires run up the stem in the sleeve to the handlebars, which are quite wide and comfortable. At either end, you're going to find comfortable hand grips, followed by dual hydraulic brake levers, which are going to stop the scooter quickly. You can also enable electronic braking, which can help you slow down even faster. After the brakes, you have your standard throttle and display. Now I received this scooter with a finger throttle, but I asked to swap it out for a thumb throttle, and I find the thumb throttle more appealing to me on this scooter. It just feels like a higher quality accelerator, even if there's a bit of dead zone on mine. Next to the throttle, there's a voltage display and keyed ignition. The key is a nice touch as it's a tiny bit of extra security so you can walk away from your scooter, but definitely don't leave it unattended for long. On the left, you have a rather lame bell. 
and the typical buttons to control eco, turbo, single, and dual motor modes. There's lots of options to control different speed output, but myself, being a speed demon, I'm always rocking dual motor and turbo. That's it for the handlebar features, and there's plenty of extra room to add a cell phone mount and other accessories. Down the stem a bit is a kitty bar with dual front 500 lumen headlights. These lights are sufficient enough for me for night riding, and I think they look great. Typically, I add a bit more lighting to get close to about 3000 lumens or so when needed. One thing that's amazing is the damper. If you're not familiar with a damper, it's a device that you can add to scooters and motorcycles which help you absorb shock and unwanted steering adjustments. It helps you keep your handlebars in the intended position and improve safety on a scooter. Right now eWheels is shipping this with an amazing all-ins damper. This is an amazing damper and one of the best that I've had the pleasure of using. It's really well built and has a huge range of adjustments. Check out the kickstand, this thing is seriously beefy. A lot of kickstands on other scooters are tiny compared to this huge kickstand. Even though it's such a simple feature, it's one of my favorite features of this scooter. The dual suspension is really nice. This scooter doesn't feel as bouncy as I felt the 10X to be, and I think it's much more stable at speed. I hit several small potholes, manhole covers, and some off-roading, and this scooter handled it with ease. The rear spring suspension goes into the rear footrest, which is also a very comfortable place to rest or brace your rear leg. All of these features come in at a huge weight of 132 pounds. That's massive and only surpassed by beasts like the Dualtron X. At this weight, you never really want to lift the scooter if you can help it. So now, let's get into some of the performance of the scooter and see if it justifies having the turbo wheel name. First things first, this is considered to be a 60 mile per hour scooter and I've actually gone faster. To get to this speed, the motors are capable of a peak output rating of 6,480 watts from a 72 volt battery. Wait a minute, something is wrong here. If you look at the scooter speedometer, it's showing 62, while the radar is only showing 51. I'm going to guess that the radar is more accurate here, and the top speed of the scooter is generally in the low 50s, probably higher on downhills. I think most scooter displays are generally inaccurate like this. Let's get back to the review. The power is delivered by two 45 amp controllers, which are starting to push a decent amount of amps here. This is more than Dualtron controllers, but less than a Weephead or Ryan. It's got a huge battery, bigger than the Dualtron Thunder, and will give you more range than a Thunder as well. At 35 amp hours, or about 2,500 watt hours, you're going to be able to ride for extremely long distances. I've gone about 35 miles riding quite fast and you could likely get much more riding at a moderate speed. I don't have range anxiety with this scooter, and rarely bring a charger. As for features which could be improved, my main gripe with the scooter is the folding mechanism. The folding mechanism is a burden to tighten and untighten. It involves several cycles of tightening, closing, opening, and repeating that several times. And then you have to do it again for the other stem. This is the worst folding mechanism I've ever seen on a scooter, and I hope they improve on this in the future. Another minor issue is that the damper mount does take up a bit of space on the deck to the right. This is fine by me because my left foot is usually near the front left of the deck, but it could be awkward if you're goofy footed. This makes for the easiest aftermarket installation, but I could see a better custom mount in the future integrated into the stem. The Phaeton is currently selling for about $3,600. Not a cheap price at all, but for all the specs and the features, I think that this is a pretty fantastic deal. It's faster and has longer range than a Dualtron Thunder, but comes in at a lower price. I would say that the Thunder is potentially more refined over the Phaeton, with the mini motors display being better than the Phaeton's display, 
but it's not a deal breaker. I could totally see myself preferring owning the Phaeton over a Dualtron Thunder, but maybe it's not worth getting the Phaeton if you already have the Thunder. Another competitor at this price range is the Curse Panther, also an awesome choice and right around the same price as the Phaeton. I think the Panther has some really awesome looks and might be for you if you're into modding, but the performance and stability are not as good as the Phaeton. Earlier, we also mentioned that the top round and weepid models push more amps in the controllers. But these models also cost roughly twice as much as the Phaeton. There's definitely diminishing returns at the high end. That's all we got for this episode on the Turbo Wheel Phaeton. If you enjoyed this episode, please like and subscribe. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you all next time.